for this video, I'd like to talk about using the idea of slope and intercepts in context to solve some different word problems. So let's just jump right in and start trying to figure out how to solve this word problem. So students have a choice between taking a test on paper or on the computer. Mrs. Ghazi graphed the relationship between the number of students taking the test on the computer and the number of test pages she would need to print. So basically, with this graph, if no students use the computer, she has to print a lot of pages. And if everyone uses the computer, then she doesn't have to print any pages. So which feature of the graph represents how many pages Mrs. Ghazi would need to print if none of the students take the test on the computer? So if none of the students take the test on the computer, so that means that this axis, we're looking for a value of zero. So that would be right here. So with zero students using the computer, we can go up to our blue line here and figure out what the page printed value is. It looks to be something around 108 or somewhere around there. But we're not asking specifically which value it is. We're asking which feature of the graph represents how many pages she'd need to print. So this graph right here, we're looking at an intercept. Remember, intercepts is just where it crosses either this axis or this axis here. This would also be an intercept, though it's not one that we actually need. So we're dealing with an intercept. And remember, this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. So since this is crossing our y-axis, this is our y-intercept right here. So that would be our answer. So let's try another one now. And the main idea is just to get comfortable with the graph before fully trying to answer the question. So Lauren graphed the relationship between how many days had passed since she had planted a cactus and its height. So this x-axis here is how many days since she planted it. So at day zero, it looks like since the vertical axis is height, it looks like at day zero that the cactus had a height of 10 centimeters. And as the days increased, the height of the cactus grew in a linear fashion. So it went up in a straight line. So which feature of the graph represents how tall the cactus was when Lauren planted it? So when she planted it, that means that days since planting would equal zero. So we are looking at this point right here. So at day zero, we go up and find our blue line, and it looks to be a height of 10 centimeters. But again, we're not looking for the exact amount of the height. We're looking for the feature of the graph. And again, we're dealing with this intercept here because it's crossing this y-axis. So this is our y-intercept. And so that is the feature of the graph that represents how tall the cactus was when it was first planted. Now moving on to another problem. So I might pronounce this wrong, but we'll go with Nirmala. Graph the relationship between the duration in hours of using an oil lamp and the volume in millimeters of oil remaining. So as time passes, so as the hours increase, the amount of oil remaining for this lamp decreases in a linear fashion. So at hour zero, when it was first lit, it looks to be something close to almost 50 milliliters of oil remaining. And after what looks to be about 32, 33 hours, that there will be no oil remaining left. So at the end, after 32 hours, they'll be left, or the lamp will essentially go out. So which fe feature of the graph represents how long Nirmala can use the lamp before it runs out of oil? So when it runs out of oil, so that means the oil volume would be zero. So we go to our y-axis, we find the oil volume of zero, that's right here. And then we just carry over and figure out where our blue line crosses over an oil volume of zero. And so that'd be right here. And again, it looks to be about 32 or 33 hours, maybe closer to 32. But again, we're not trying to find the exact amount. We just want the feature of the graph. And since this is where it crosses the x 
axes, this is what we would call an X intercept. And really I should probably put a little bit more space between them, but X intercept is the feature that we need to solve this problem. And now moving on to another one. So with this problem, we have a stalactite and a stalagmite are growing toward each other in a cave. The following graph shows the relationship be the, between the time in years since they appeared and the distance in milli, millimeters between the stalactite and stalagmite. So let's try and analyze this graph. We know the y-axis is just the distance between them and the x-axis is the time in years. So it looks like as time increases, the distance between these will start to approach each other. So essentially one is growing from the top, one is growing from the bottom, and they're getting closer and closer to each other. So our question, which feature of the graph represents the rate of change of the distance between the stalactite and stalagmite? So whenever you see rate of change, you wanna think about slope. Because remember, slope is a rate. It's how much the y values change divided by how much the x values change. Rates are always just a ratio or a fraction comparing two different quantities with different units sometimes. So since we're asking for the rate of change, we want to know how quickly these two are moving closer together. And we could actually find that by just counting essentially you know, how much did we go down? Our rise in this case would be negative. And then how much did we go over to the right? Our run would be positive. It looks like our run would be 20. And it looks like we're going down. Uh, it's hard to say, maybe like 190 down to 80. So we might be going down about 110. So we can find roughly the slope of this line, but that's not what it's asking for. It's just asking which feature of the graph represents this rate of change, and that's the slope. The slope will tell us how quickly the distance between these stalactites and stalagmites are actually approaching each other. So A will answer this question, and let's do one more. So in this one, Beatrice graphed the relationship between the time in seconds since she sent a print job to the printer and the number of pages printed. So our horizontal axis, our x-axis here, represents the time since she sent the print job to the printer. And then the y-axis represents the number of pages printed. So it looks like there was a bit of a delay before anything started getting printed. Looks like after five seconds, the first page started being printed. And then as time increased, the printed pages increased linearly. So our question is, what does the x-intercept represent in this context? So x-intercept, that's right here, where it crosses the x-axis. So like I mentioned, there was that delay. Because at this x-intercept, we're at five seconds in and zero pages have been printed. So when we look at our answer choices, the x-intercept just represents the number of seconds that passed before the printer started printing pages. Because it was five seconds that passed before the printer started working.